Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Who should Manchester United sign? Jaden Sancho or Erling Haaland? Now I can assure we won't get both of them. Now they are both good players. I'd love Ole Gunnar Solskjaer to sign Erling Haaland. Obviously Solskjaer worked with Erling Haaland during his time at Mulder and gave him his debut at just the age of 16. And recent narratives have said that Solskjaer keeps calling Erling Haaland to persuade him to join Manchester United. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has revealed that Erling Haaland struggled with bad knees at Mulder. Solskjaer also revealed how impressed he was with Haaland's training at Mulder. But earlier on this season, Solskjaer said he was following Erling Haaland's progress and is keeping in touch with the player. Dortmund have already revealed their asking price for Haaland. It's £154 million. They're going to find it extremely difficult to sell Erling Haaland if they are demanding that much. But there's a good chance he'll leave, especially if Dortmund fail to qualify for the Champions League. Erling Haaland's father, Alf Hinch Haaland, He's spoken about his son's transfer links to Man United before and he's spoken about his son's career and his prospects. I'm hearing Haaland is demanding £600,000 a week if he is to join Man United, Man City or Chelsea. He does have a £68 million release clause but it doesn't become active until next year. Erling Haaland's got a contract with Dortmund until 2024. Dortmund paid just £17 million for him and he's been at Dortmund over a year. But it'd be good if we got Haaland because he would dramatically improve us, he'd assure his goals and he's still young and he's got a lot of development in him. Now, Jadon Sancho, we are still interested in him. We believe we've got a chance of getting Jadon Sancho for a cut price fee of £50 million. Now, he was our number one priority target last summer. The main explanation we didn't get him last summer is because Dortmund's valuation was £108 million and we was reluctant to meet that. We was only willing to pay so much up front. But a few times last summer, he said the personal terms had been agreed, the agent fees had been agreed and even a contract had been agreed. Uh, we had until the 10th of August last summer to sign Sancho. We missed out on that deadline, so he remained at Borussia Dortmund. Now, Fabrizio Romano, he's spoken a lot about the Jaden Sancho transfer saga, and so too has built Christian Fark. Sancho has visited our Carrington training ground a few times. Now, Bill said earlier on this season that Dortmund reduced their asking price for Sancho to £88 million, so they're not £20 million pounds off. He said earlier on this season we'd dropped our interest in Sancho because of the progress of Mason Greenwood. Borussia Dortmund CEO gave us a boost earlier on this season because he said Sancho, Haaland and more Dortmund, Dortmund stars could be sold in the summer transfer window to avoid financial chaos. Earlier on this season, don't forget Sancho made an admission saying that he has endured a difficult season at Dortmund. Analysing the vast majority of his career with Dortmund though he's been very consistent. Dortmund paid just £8 million for him from Man City. Back in 2017, he's under contract with Dortmund until 2023. And this is his fourth season at Dortmund. 
we was willing to offer him that number seven shirt. So yeah, so which one should Manchester United sign? Jaden Sancho is obviously a cheaper solution than Erling Haaland. There has been a lot of players on our agenda. Uh, there's been a lot of narratives coming out regarding Harry Kane recently. Harry Kane has dealt Tottenham a major blow. He's refused to commit his future to the club. He's delaying his transfer decision until after the international break. We're going to have to pay around £150 million to convince Tottenham to offload him, but it's likely that Kane will leave because he is unhappy. David Einstein was talking about him not so long ago and he said he spoke to people in football. He says Kane wants to leave. He's committed to Tottenham whilst he's there, but he wants to win big trophies and he's not experiencing this at Tottenham. Jermaine Defoe's even said Harry Kane needs to leave Tottenham if he wants to win trophies. Uh, Muslim City are in for him because we're both in search for number nines. Harry Kane is regarded as one of the best strikers in the world. You know, he's a prolific goal scorer. He's won the Golden Boot a couple of times. He's been at Tottenham 17 years now. He's been in their senior squad since 2009. He's got a contract with Tottenham until 2024. He's had quite a few loan spells before with Leighton Orient, Millwall, Norwich and Leicester. He's highly experienced. He is the age of 27. You already know the news on Marcos Llorente from Atletico Madrid. Atletico Madrid have set the price for Man United to sign Marcos Llorente. We have to pay his entire 103 million release clause. Reports from Spain said on Friday that we made an offer of 68.5 million for Marcos Llorente and it said we was prepared to double his £90,000 a week wages but it did mention a move is unlikely. Marcos Llorente can play as a midfielder and a second striker. Atletico Madrid paid £35 million for him from Real Madrid. He's under contract of Atletico till 2024. Yeah, before he was at Atletico, he enjoyed 11 years with Real Madrid, so he was a long-serving player there. And he's also had a loan spell with Alaves. There's been quite a few centre-halves on our agenda. Uh, not so long ago, there was narratives coming out regarding Paul Torres, saying that he's heading to Old Trafford. Uh, Real Madrid president Florentina Perez is infuriated with Man United for entering the race because Real Madrid were emerged as the favourites. says we are preparing a bid for Paul Torres. He does have a release clause of £52 million which I think becomes active in the summer. He's been at Villarreal a long time. Uh, there's been a lot of narratives coming out regarding Rafael Varane um, he looks very likely to leave Real Madrid. Mundo Deportivo said the other week that his future is in doubt and is high on our transfer wish list. He said earlier on this season that Real Madrid are prepared to sell Rafael Varane on one condition. He must inform Real Madrid on his decision to leave. Back in 2018, we was prepared to sanction a £100 million move. I think now he's valued in the 60 odd million pound range. Rafael Varane has been at Real Madrid around 10 years now. He's made over 300 appearances and he's won 18 major honours. Real Madrid paid 10 million euros for him from Lens back in 2011. But he is a world class centre half and he would go well alongside Maguire in our back line. Jules Conde from Sevilla, he's been another centre half on our agenda. Kalidou Kulabali has been on our agenda. 
earlier on this season it said we was in for Sergio Ramos. I'm expecting Man United to make around three or four signings in the summer transfer window. Oli Solskjaer did warn earlier on this season that we may not do business as usual due to the coronavirus pandemic, but he said he's interested in bringing in players that will be a perfect fit for the club. I've already identified the weaknesses in the squad. We definitely need a striker, we need a right winner, we need a defensive midfielder and we also need a centre-half. I reckon Solskjaer needs at least £200 million in the summer transfer window if he's to get the players he wants to recommend in. Now it said earlier on this season that our transfer budget had been revealed, it was £80 million. And a lot of United fans are shocked in that aspect because we know £80 million is not enough for us to get the players we want to recommend in. But this year's summer transfer window is the biggest in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's managerial career. I'm expecting him to get the backing he deserves because obviously Woodward has come out and said that he believes Solskjaer is the right man to lead the club forward. Um, he did a statement earlier on this season saying that the progress by Solskjaer and the players this season is clear. So in that aspect, Woodward is backing him. And in general, Woodward's come out several times to show his support for Ollie. And plus we've got John Murtough. He's our director of football. It was the right decision by the club to get a director of football in because I did mention that's one of the structural changes that we needed at the club. Uh, John Murtough knows the club inside out because he's been at Man United since 2014. And obviously we've got Dan and Fletcher, who's our technical director and he knows the club through thick and thin because he endured two decades as a player for Man United. And Solskjaer's already had the transfer summer with the recruitment team. You know, he was discussing our transfer targets and, our, and discussing our transfer plans for the summer in general. Um, I can assure Solskjaer will be Manchester United manager in the summer transfer window. He will be Man United manager next season. Because we've already said that Solskjaer will not be sacked even if we fail to win the Europa League this season. The Europa League is our only chance of winning any silverware this season. You know, Solskjaer has not yet won a trophy as Manchester United manager and we haven't won a trophy since 2017 and that's nowhere near good enough to our standards. A club of our stature needs to be winning trophies. Uh, Solskjaer did say, no, say, though, not so long ago, that winning trophies can be an ego thing. He said that in regards to some other managers and some other clubs. So what he's basically saying is clubs like Man United trophies no longer prove success. But in that aspect, I've got to totally disagree with him. You know, if we don't win the Europa League this season, that'll be four years without a trophy. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has agreed a new three-year contract worth £30 million. Uh, Sources at Old Trafford did say a few weeks ago, though, it wouldn't be long before contract talks uh, were going to happen on the new deal. Because Ole is now into the final year of his current three-year contract. Does Solskjaer deserve a new contract? In some aspects, yeah. In some aspects, no. I think there'll be a lot of Man United fans that disagree with us, you know, handing him this new three-year contract. Because to be honest with you, I don't think he'll see it out. Because I can assure he isn't the long-term manager for Man United, but I hope I'm wrong. We are going to sell players in the summer transfer window. Now, I recently give you the news on Paul Pogba. Paul Pogba has rejected a new contract at Manchester United. He still wants to quit Manchester United. 
Uh, De Marzio has come out and said that Paul Pogba has no intentions of extending his contract with Man United. And he said his preferred destination is Juventus. I said there's a good chance he'll go back to Juventus. You know, Paul Pogba endured four exceptional years with Juventus before he rejoined Manchester United. Now, recent narratives have said that Juventus want to offer us Paula Dybala as part of a swap deal for Pogba. Juventus do want a Paul Pogba swap deal. It recently said they was willing to offload Adrian Rabiot and Aaron Ramsey to afford Pogba. And Fabrizio Romano has already said that Juventus are refusing to give up on re-signing Paul Pogba. But he has had a long-running transfer saga. Um, he hadn't only been linked to a return to Juventus, he's been relentlessly linked to a move to Real Madrid and PSG have been in for him. Now, we have been getting the best out of Paul Pogba in recent months. Obviously came on against Milan and made an instant impact and scored the goal. Because um, he was out of a fine injury for a while. He had an ankle injury earlier on this season and he was out for the vast majority of last season with an ankle injury. So sustained a few injuries now at Man United. I'd like us to keep Paul Popper potentially past the summer because he brings creativity to the team. You know, disregarding Paul Popper, we lack creativity and we are far too defensive. I like Paul Popper on the left wing, you know, in more of an advanced role because that's where he's more effective. Uh, Minio Riola has obviously been desperate to get his client out of the football club. You know, Minio Riola doesn't have a good relationship with Man United and he has been criticised a lot. Minio Riola has been doing a lot of talking recently. You know, he's criticised Sir Alex Ferguson for forcing Paul Popper out of the club when he was younger. Um, he's also been speaking about Erling Haaland. And obviously spoken about Paul Popper a few times, you know, about how unhappy he is at Manchester United. You know, he did make an announcement back in December of last year regarding Pogba. He said that Paul Pogba's career at Man United is over. He said he's unhappy and he has to leave and he's got no intentions of signing a new contract. Ollie was furious with Minio Riola's announcement. Um, he did say, though, earlier on this season that he's got no intentions of destabilising his client's season. And he made an admission saying that he's working quietly on Paul Pogba's transfer. Now, earlier on this season, we triggered that one-year extension on his contract, so he's under contract on Man United until June 2022. Ollie said a few weeks ago that he hopes Paul Popper will stay and sign a new contract. We have been in contract negotiations with Paul Popper. Now, as it stands at the moment, he is our most expensive signing because we paid £89 million for him, and this is his fifth season at the football club since he rejoined. Uh, Matthias Popper, Paul Popper's brother, he gave us an update on Popper's future earlier on this season and he advised us to sell Popper in the summer because he said there's a good chance he'll leave for free next year and he's got no intentions of signing a new contract. So there you go. Um, Cavani, it looks like he's going to be leaving Man United in the summer transfer window. Uh, Man United have recently held talks with Edison Cavani over his future at the club. Our chefs want him to stay. Uh, Edison Cavani has three months left on his current contract. We do have an option to trigger his contract for the further year. Uh, the Uruguay coach has urged Edison Cavani to leave Manchester United. Now, Footballer Insider said earlier on this season that Cavani had reached a verbal agreement to join Boca Juniors at the end of the season. So, he goes in the summer transfer window. We won't receive a transfer fee for him. Solskjaer said earlier on this season that he was closer to Boca Juniors than staying at Man United. But Solskjaer said he's hopeful that, he's hopeful that he will stay for next season. And he's revealed we've been in contract talks with 
Cavani. His father came out as well saying that Cavani is unhappy, he's not comfortable in England and he wants to leave. Cavani sustained a few injuries at Man United. But he has made a fantastic impact since he's come in. We got him on a free transfer last summer. He signed a one-year contract with the club with an option of a second year. Um, a lot of United fans are saying that we need to sell Anthony Martial in the summer. Uh, because Anthony Martial is no longer good enough to represent Man United. And he's been out of form for the vast majority of this season. He's had chances, but he hasn't converted them. I think he's out, actually out of injury at the moment. He sustained an injury on international duty with France. He had a hip injury for us not so long ago and he had an injury prior to that as well. Uh, but earlier on this season, Matt Shalshar backed him to rediscover his form and he's been impressed with his work rate. I reckon Martial's had two good seasons at Man United. He was good last season and he was good in his debut season under Louis van Gaal. Uh, we got Martial in a deal worth £54 million from Monaco. Martial's been at the club now over five years. I think it was last season Solskjaer gave him that number nine shirt. Uh, Donny van der Beek, you know, good chance he's going to go in the summer transfer window because Donny van der Beek isn't getting enough opportunities at Manchester United. He did recently say, though, that he feels loved at the club despite his lack of game time and Ronald de Boer's backed Donny van der Beek to become a success at Man United. A few weeks ago, it said that Donny van der Beek wants to quit Man United after one season and he said he was set for showdown talks with Ed Woodward over his future. Earlier on this season, Solskjaer made an admission regarding van der Beek and he said he is unhappy because he's not playing enough, but he promised him more game time at Man United. Um, he was out with injury for a while. Mark Hughes has been talking about him, saying that he feels lost at Man United and he's edging closer to a Man United exit. We got him in a deal worth £40 million, and he's versatile, he can play in three different roles. He's only started two games in the league this season, surprisingly. Uh, good chance we'll sell Matic in the summer transfer window, because he isn't one of our first choice midfielders. Uh, Phil Jones, I'm expecting him to go. Romero, I'm expecting him to go. There's a good chance that we're going to offload David De Gea as well. Uh, Juan Mata, like I said, good chance we'll offload him. Uh, I think we'll be looking to get rid of Diego Delo permanently. Uh, these players, though, at Manchester United that have improved, and there's good players in general. Our two best players by far this season have been Luke Shaw and Bruno Fernandes. Harry Maguire, he's done well in some of the games he's played in, but he's been poor in other games. But either way... He wasn't worth the £80 million we got him for. He's the second most expensive sign at the club and the most expensive centre-half in the world. Bay has done well in the games he's been involved in this season. But my element of concern about Eric Bay is too injury-prone, so in that aspect he is a liability. Now, it recently said that contract talks for Eric Bay are on hold until he has assurances over his playing time. Bay recently apologised to Solskjaer and his Man United teammates for his disrespectful behaviour because he said he was furious with Solskjaer because he felt disrespected and not wanted at the club. And he simply believes that we're only offering him a new contract to increase his asking price. bay has got just 15 months left on his current contract. Uh, Anwan Basaki, you know, he's impressed me in some games this season. You know, in the games he's done well and he's shown good attacking intent. He's got into good positions. He's put good crosses into the box. Defensively, more or less, he's been superb. But there's been some games where he's been poor, where he's been caught out far too many times. And he's just lacked that attacking intent. We got Anwan Bissaka in a deal worth £50 million from Crystal Palace in the summer of 2019. He's the only recognised... Senior right back now at the club. 
Uh, Fred, I've been impressed with him in some games, but he's also had some poor games. I can assure Fred wasn't worth the £52 million we got him for from Shakhtar and Esk. When Fred plays well, he can get forward well. He can keep the ball well and he can break up the play well. But when he's poor, he gives the ball away too many times and he's too static and too easily predictable. Now, Fred enjoyed an abysmal game against Leicester in the FA Cup quarter-final, probably his worst ever game in a Manchester United shirt. Accountable for Leicester's first goal and gave the ball away countless times. Scott McTomin, where you know he's a decent player and he has enjoyed some good games, especially this season. Probably his best game was a 6-2 win against Leeds, but McTominay is not at that level where we're wanting to be at as yet. You know, he's still young, he's got a lot of development in him. Just after the first lockdown, McTominay signed a new five-year contract with the club. You know, Paul Popper would have been getting the best out of him in recent months. You know, Mason Greenwood, he's done very, very well since he broke into our first-team squad. You know, sometimes we play Greenwood on the right wing, sometimes we play him centrally. Greenwood's been part of the club for a while. He's been at United since the age of seven. He's been in our senior squad since 2019. You know, earlier on this season, we give him a new four-year contract. And at the start of this season, we give him that number 11 shirt. Ollie's been defending him a lot this season. Uh, Marcus Rashford, he's a very good player. Uh, sustained a few injuries now, though, so he has become a bit injury-prone. Uh, most of the time we seem to play Rashford on the left wing, that's why I think we need to keep him because that's where he's more effective. A couple of times we played him on the right wing and a, a few times as well we played him up top. You know, Rashford's been part of the club for several years. He's been at United since the age of seven and he's been in our senior squad since 2016. So yeah, so these are some very, very good players at Man United. There is a few players, though, that don't even get in our 11. You know, Williams doesn't get in our 11. Uh, Jones doesn't get in our 11. Axel Tuanzebe doesn't get in our 11. Romero doesn't get in our 11. Telez doesn't really get in our 11. You know, when we got Telez, I expected him to be our first choice left back. But I prefer Luke Shaw to Telez anyway, because Shaw gets forward better than him. You know, Juan Mata doesn't get in our 11. So, there you go. But um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, we've got to credit him in quite a few aspects because he has made good signings as Manchester United manager. You know, he's spent almost £300 million. You know, he's brought players like Dan James and wan and Harry Maguire in. Also bought Bruno Fernandes in and Odin Agala win on loan. Agala's no longer here because he left in January. And he brought the likes of Donny van der Beek in, Alex Tellez, Edison Cavani, Mad Dilo, Traore and Facundo Palestri. Facundo Palestri left on loan in January, but Solskjaer still did bring him in. Ollie's enjoyed four transfer windows so far as permanent Man United manager. Um, Ollie did well last season in his first full season at the club. Guided us to three semi-finals, got us qualification for the Champions League and got us a third place finish. You know, this season got us to the EFL Cup semi-final. You know, got us to the FA Cup quarter-final and, you know, we are in the Europa League quarter-final. We've got a fantastic away record in the Premier League. We haven't lost away from home in the Premier League for over a year and we have enjoyed good periods under Rolly where we have seen consistency and he's also got rid of a lot of players since he's come in. I think Solskjaer is our best manager since Ferguson. I can assure that. But there is a lot of Man United fans that are Ollie out. Ollie outs were trending on social media after the 3 1 defeat to Leicester. But maybe there's still some Man United fans that are Ollie going to Solskjaer in that believes he needs more time. He has been Manchester United manager now over two years. You know, Fletcher now on his being at the club, he's gained some managerial experience. This is his second full season at Man United, so next season will be his third full season at the club. 
Um, I can assure we will finish in the top four this season. I assured that after our 1-0 win against West Ham. But I think a top four finish at the Europa League isn't good enough. It isn't. I said if we finish second in the league this season and we can get the Europa League, I'll turn around and say that represents a good season for Man United and that gives us something to build on going on into next season. But even if we wanted to sack Solskjaer now, we wouldn't be able to anyway because as far as I'm aware at the moment there is no available. And plus if we did decide to sack him, it wouldn't really solve anything anyway because when we are inconsistent, not all of the blame stems from him. He's accountable for obviously some things that happen. You know, his decision making's poor a lot of the time. He's always, you know, he hasn't got a proven pedigree as a manager. Doesn't have that big club arrogance as a manager. And I feel as all he's in a position he shouldn't be really in. But Solskjaer knew when he'd taken over at Man United it was going to be a massive job despite him knowing the club inside out. But in the last eight years, nothing's changed at Manchester United. You know, it's just been an ongoing cycle of inconsistency. Despite us, you know, having different managers with different philosophies. Despite us over paying for players. You know, nothing's worked out. But we have made mistakes in the last eight years. And that's why we haven't been as consistent as we'd like to have been. So anyway guys, that's everything to update for today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.